Hi everyone, I'm back again. Uh, as you can see, I've made a couple of changes, or one big change to my dash uh, from my previous videos. So as you know before, I had the App Radio 2 installed, uh, and then I purchased an iPhone 5. And then I also realized that the iPhone 5 was not compatible with the App Radio 2 at the time of the purchase. Just as a quick note, that has since changed now. Um, since CES, Pioneer has announced a new uh, accessory kit that's going to be released for the iPhone 5 to be able to work through the uh, to be able to be used with the iPhone 5 to make the app radio 2 compatible uh, they're doing it through HDMI in VGA so there'll be two different connectivity kits for the phone and the radio depending on the deck that you're using so what I decided to do was uh, they, uh, once they release the iPhone 5 then the iPad mini was released soon thereafter and I started to figure out hmm, maybe I should get figure out a way to get the iPad mini into my car because it's, that's essentially the same thing you were doing with the app radio, right? When we were jailbroken, you had access to the whole screen as you do right here. So I figured with a little bit of elbow grease and a lot of time, I'd be able to figure out how to do it. So here's the final result. As you can see, it just pulls right out from here. And then you have the, uh, that's the dash kit mold that I created using uh, fiberglass paint and some resin. I think it turned out pretty good. I was using the Skosh, uh, the Skosh Mazda 3 dash kit for the 2010 model. It still needs one more coat of paint, coat of paint but uh, I got excited and got it thrown in so you can see there's a couple of blemishes there that still need to be covered. But overall, this is what the final product will look like. You can see that there's uh, two felt pads on the bottom corners there uh, for uh, stability. And then you can just, actually I pulled it out a little too far, let me just uh, pardon the camera moving all over the place. And then you can see here, it just slides back in, and then it's magnetized right back in. So even if you give it a little pull, right, you still have to give it a little bit of a yank to get it out. You can see it's magnetized right in. When you hold it upside down, the iPad actually is held in there. So I'll take out the dash kit. Just give me one second here. Let me put the camera down. Pull this out. So like I said, it took about three months actually. It took a little bit longer than what I thought just because of available time that I thought I had, but turns out I, uh, I didn't have. Let's get this out here. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. So here's the, uh, here's the final the final product so you can see let me just get it under the light here I must have broke maybe three or four different molds before I finally got one perfect enough to uh, to cut out and then attach and then put a few more layers of resin and fiberglass on to get it to uh, take the final shape so you can see those bumps there they're actually rare earth magnets that I use because on the back of the iPad mini I'll show you uh, in a second I put two magnetic pads on the back of that for it to uh, for it to magnetize in. So I just used uh, some really high grade glue to stick, uh, to use to adhere this thing on finally, drilled a small hole for the uh, iPad cable, the lightning cable, and then right across the top there. So you can see it's very low profile dash kit, very thin, right? And then like I said, still needs maybe a couple of more layers of paint to get that final finished OEM look. And then, Let's uh, get this back in here. There we go. Just fold this down. You see this dash kit's one of the easiest ones to take out. There you go. Now this has got this has left a little bit of a gap because I've had so many radios in here now, it's just eventually stretch this out. But then I've also using the, as you've seen in other previous videos, the 99RS as my audio uh, processor. So there's two ways that you can actually install this thing. Hold on quickly, let me show you the, those are the two back magnetic pads I use to have the thing just stick on. So yeah, it's a bit of an eyesore, but it's black on black and not too many times am I gonna have this thing out of the car for you. So it's always gonna be in here mostly. Um, but uh, there's two ways you can go about using this thing. You can go about using it OEM, uh, OEM Bluetooth, right? If you just take out the stock head unit and then build something like this, you can do Bluetooth streaming. Or I recommend using the uh, using a deck because you get better sound quality. 
uh, use of your steering wheel controls. You'll also get those with Bluetooth uh, streaming as well. But uh, I just think the sound quality is better and you're getting a better overall experience when you use a deck. Um, it won't charge the iPad. None of the head units on the market will charge the iPad. And I believe that's because they don't use a 2 amp USB, just a 1 amp USB. So the battery won't drain, but it'll just be maintained, basically, is, uh, is what'll happen. And finally, the last thing I can recommend, buy the 4G version or the cellular version iPad makes life so much easier for you because the Wi-Fi version doesn't do turn-by-turn -turn directions using the Maps app. It doesn't have the GPS chip built in. So that is my iPad mini install on a 2010 Mazda 3. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments on the app radio side, I'm still keeping track on that and still playing with uh, with the app radio in my uh, in the Mrs. car. So I can keep, uh, so I'm up to date on that. And if you have any questions or comments about this install, feel free to post it. All right, take care. Bye.